Well, hello there. My name is HW. Hey, I'm the Suze. And uh, Suze, what are you talking about today? Uh, Tweed Deluxe? The Tweed Deluxe Pack is a closer, closer look. look. That's it's right. a closer look. What the heck is a Tweed Deluxe Pack? I figured at this point, we have so many Deluxe Packs. <laughs> Somebody right. might be saying, what the heck is the difference between the 65 mm -hmm. Deluxe, the Tweed Deluxe, the, um, the 62 Deluxe, maybe we'll do a Silver Deluxe mm -hmm. or a Silver Lux. Wasn't there a divided by 13 in there? Or was that the two? There's a, div there's a deluxe divide. Okay. Yeah, that was free. And that was Tweety? Yeah, but those those divided amps, the good people at divided by 13, I almost think it's not appropriate to f view those amps as being based on something else. Okay. Because they're sort of like, they're just informed by something else. Mm -hmm. They really are not those things. Right. The LDW, is not a marshal. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's informed by a marshal. Okay. But it's in no way a marshal clone. This is the closest we can try. I, and what I mean by that is it's significantly different. Mm -hmm. There's not you like people who like marshals will like that amp. But I think people who don't like marshals will probably still really like that amp. It's yeah. it's quite different. It's and they don't they're not vintagey feeling. Mm -hmm. They're boutique feeling. Yeah. Uh, the other tweeds we did the um, pine top are we putting that in here? Uh huh. That was the um, the Ellie Pine. Okay. We did the um, yeah. That's that's similar to the circuit. Again, changed uh, a good amount. There's the edgy one, the edgy tweed, I like those. which was like yeah. a modified kind of version of the amp. Now, if you ask me, that that circuit contains very little headroom by design, yeah. and it uses a Celestian Blue speaker. Okay. So there's sort of a big difference in the emphasis here. But this was actually uh, profiles from a clone of, uh, of a Tweed Deluxe, of a 5E3 circuit, mm -hmm. and then I used um, a vintage Jensen P12. Okay. Actually, the, sa the, the one that's in my Deluxe Reverb. Oh. So we're, we're, we're at the correct model speaker, mm -hmm. but from a couple years after this amp was made. Okay. The first Deluxes would have come out in 57, and Tweed Deluxes. And then the what a deluxe was went through some changes mm -hmm. over time. So by 61, 62, it was brown face. By 63, it was a black face. And then by 68, it had a drip edge and a silver face. You've learned a lot about amps. I know. <laughs> I, I know a thing it's or two incredible. about amplifiers. Yeah. But that's, I mean, you know, you can find a lot of that stuff on the internet and, and, and people just sure. people yeah. just know when the cosmetics change and when the circuits are changing. Mm -hmm. The circuits change more commonly than that, actually. Okay. Uh, there's a couple, there's a few variations of the circuits, especially once you get to silver face. All of the, they, they were almost changing things year by year. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, whether it's on there or not, whether it's a, whether it has a different number or not, year by year things were changing in the amps. So it's so even though a seventy two and a seventy three might say the same thing, the same circuit on a twin, uh, there was a lot of movement around those things. Right. Okay. Kind of like the full tone OCD, right? I mean, who knows what's really going on? There's like eight versions. Yeah, there. so many versions. Um, anyway, 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 uh, let's get to it. Um, how would I describe this pack? I would say it's. It sounds like a smaller amp. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of compression, a lot of tweediness, and so it provides t lead tones that are actually really great. Mm -hmm. We don't always think of in 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 music like a little amp will give us the best lead tones, right. but it's a hundred percent true. And if you think of how a lot of classic amps were recorded, some of some very iconic lead tones, we think of Jimmy Page as having a big Marshall stack. Not on Zep 1. Mm -hmm. We think of Joe Perry as having big amps behind him. Famously, Deluxe Reverb is on some of that early Aerosmith stuff. Mm. And they sound big. But if you think about it, lead players, when you're playing lead, you love gain, you love compression, and you love a pointed EQ that doesn't have too much bottom end so you can cut through. Mm -hmm. So actually, 110, 112 amps yeah. actually do that thing really well, right? Right. Low wattage, now we're all into low wattage amps, mm. but that w was the studio secret. Mm. Low wattage amps turned way up, gave us this amazing pointed 
compressed, saturated lead sound right. that you would knock a house down if you tried to do with a 100 watt plexi <laughs> and, a, and two 412s. Yeah, but yeah. that's what we have in our head as what we think. So let's play through some of these. Mm -hmm. There's a bright, a normal, and a jumpered. That's what B, N, and J stand for, of course. If you're familiar with tone junkie stuff, mm -hmm. you're familiar with, with those numbers. But um, bright, I would say, is on the brighter side. Normal, I would suggest is good for that Joe Bonamassa, I want to throw it on the bridge of a uh, of like a humbucker guitar mm -hmm. because the normal input by itself, you know, if you just if you're trying to use everything for everything, it's hard to appreciate what some things do well. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the normal profiles and they're too dark, they might get a little muddy on the neck, but when you throw it on a bridge, especially of like a LP style guitar, mm -hmm. you'll notice they are fat, thick, but it still sounds like the bridge of a guitar. Right. Bright, I think, is more useful for Sunday morning praise and worship. Jumpered combines those two EQs, but you're going to get more gain because now you got more gain stages. Yeah. Let's play through some with some different guitars, and uh, we'll chop this all together on post and see how it goes. Wonderful. Let's do it. So, one profile, three guitars, mm -hmm. uh, unscientific with the positions and stuff, but the Strat sounds cleaner, mm -hmm. a little underpowered, um, and it sounds more full, more balanced to me. Yeah. Um, um, these are the bright ones, but the Strat sounded, the Strat has, you expect, expect the Strat to be bright. Mm -hmm. This guitar sounded like a, like a, preteen girl yelling at her mother. You know what I mean? It sounded like... I think I do. It sounded like... Um, no, it sounded like whiny, yelly, sort mm. of bright, mm -hmm. you know, and much more mid-range came through. Mm -hmm. and um, But bright, mid-rangey, and you, you you hear the amp being pushed more. Yeah, you hear yeah. the push sound, where it's obviously, it's more dirty here, and you get all that bridge, mm -hmm. rach sound. Mm -hmm. Without being too thick, it sounds... Or, or big sounding. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then this guitar, uh, the P90s, in the middle, cleaning up, and we get more um, more of a Fender type sound. Yeah. But on the bridge, had a had its own mid range kind of thing going on, mm. pushing the amp, the profile somewhere in the middle of those other two guitars. Yeah. That's B3. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's Klon stuff in here too. You know what I mean? Let's try J3. And we should see more gain. And uh, here, I'll, let's let's do these three guitars again. Let's do it. <laughs>
Now, that's the J profile, right? Mm -hmm. or, or one of them, it's J3. Um, it's the, it's, it, we're probably at close to straight up at noon. Okay. We're a little below that. Okay. Um, none of them sound polite now. Right. right? Yeah, I mean, not, and, not it's, the strap, and the yeah. knobs are at the same spot, but now we're going into two channels. Mm -hmm. So we have, so we have two more gain stages, mm -hmm. right? That are adding and then, and then coming together at the phase inverter. Yeah. So now the strat still sounds like a strat, but it sounds overdriven. Mm -hmm. Um, this thing sounded just raucous, you know, more of it mm -hmm. and more low end, more beef. Sort of mm. where the B has that bright sound, mm -hmm. there's like lows and mid range you hear that now makes this, it takes it from like just a more whining, sort of like rat, mm. like a roar. You know what I mean? So is that that normal channel bringing that yeah. into the Yeah, the channel? low end for sure, okay. for sure. Like the low end and thickness and stuff. Now it starts to sound like, you know, a roar. Whereas before it sounded like, you know, maybe an angry cat. Mm. You know a daughter what I mean? or a cat. A do mm. Those two angry things. <laughs> Those two angry things <laughs> are... <laughs> the roar is good, though. Yeah, yeah. the roar is good. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh -huh. And then this guitar, now, you can you can clean it up, mm -hmm. but you still have fullness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's not an overly bright quality. It's still a thick sounding... To me, this is a lot more indicative of the tweed sound. Right. Just yeah. that, like, that... There's actually not a ton of deep bass. Mm -hmm. It's those, these low mids that just make it thick and tweedy. Yeah, you yeah know especially I mean? on those J profiles to me, it's really tight sounding, mm -hmm. very controlled. Mm -hmm. But um, like if you sit there and listen to the EQ of it, mm -hmm. yeah, I can tell it could, it'll cut really well. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's a ton of mids there for mm -hmm. sure. All right, let's do this again. Let's try the N profiles. Those are darker. Those are the ones where you're, you got to remember these, this thing. These vintage circuits were not like, like, well architected to be. Is that a word? They weren't like put together to be useful all mm. the time. It was almost more like the electrical engineers just changed a component. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wonder if the, I wonder if they had test guitars that it made a lot of sense for. Like, I wonder if the bright ones were overly bright, like a Plexi is overly bright for like a jazz box. Mm -hmm. And then like a jazz master bridge. You know what I'm saying? Right. But compared to what we are a lot of times used to today, the vintage stuff is so different on the bright channel and the dark channel. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the normal channel is going to shine a little more when you use the bridge of the guitars. You're going to get the brightness from the guitar, but it's still going to sound big. Yeah. Okay. Let's try that. By far the warmest 
of the three. Yeah. Uh huh. Definitely on the warmer side. Mm -hmm. Even with this one, I'm, I, I feel like maybe too warm without some adjustment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the strap, yeah. you heard on the neck how full and almost kind of just like woofy it could be. Mm -hmm. And then instantly on the bridge it fits, right? Totally. On the guitar of this, on the guitar like this, um, fits well, could be a little brighter if you want it, but thick. Th mm -hmm. That's, to me, that P90 sound with that normal channel is like a lot of the classic P90 tones you hear in like classic rock and vintage mm -hmm. kind of gear music, right? Um, this one is a f decently bright, LP style guitar, mm -hmm. but um, let's show them these again, but now with the Klon added to the three plus with a okay. Klon drop. Cause then it's like, God save the queen, rock royalty really? tone. I mean, it then it's just, it's a match made in heaven. It's the brightness, mm -hmm. it's the fullness, and then the Klon gives it that like pointed really mm. and it's just tone is an equation it's like a well seasoned steak that's seared right and the cow was massaged and it was just mm -hmm. good like a cannoli with the right outer crunchy mm. part the chocolate poured on top the yeah. you know what i mean mm. mascarpone oh and the chocolate sprinkles you put a cherry on it we it's like a lunch. sundae <laughs> with a right no i'm really hungry actually yeah. but let's show them with the clon Three plus. See what I mean? Sounds just like a cannoli. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> you know who's got good cannolis around here? Uh -uh. Desanos. Oh man, we need to go back there. We. I just went there this week. We the have best. Like a, it's like, like a gear hang there that one time. We did, and yeah. then and you took me there the first time. It's the best pizza place in Nashville it really by is. far. Yeah. Like, and it's so I just brought people from San Francisco and where they say is the best pizza. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, compare these two. And they agreed that it's it's better out here. No. Yeah. Like their best in San Francisco. Everything at DeSano's is from Italy except the water. It's Nashville water. Right. But the, the flour, cheese, the they, cheese, they the, it all. The, the sweet peppers, the sausage, it's all. I the ovens a, are from there. Right. I talked to one of the guys making the pizza one time. Mm -hmm. He said he commutes from Italy. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you had me go for a minute. <laughs> Did I really? You can't. Yeah. I was like, oh wow, what's wow? Where did he come from? Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, um, this has hopefully been helpful for those people who um, who maybe are thinking about getting the pack, want to get the pack, yeah, or who just left this video playing and they left the room because 
why else would you have sat through? Who's still here? Uh, yeah, who's yeah. still here? Right. The guy from Dasanas. Uh -huh. Well, I've been HW. I'm Seuss. And um, actually, this was educational. I like that we're learning about the profiles, but also learning about amps, how they work. I yeah. Think, I think it's cool. Yeah, and it's a, it's a good example that, like, you know, we're trying to capture things that existed before we got here. Mm -hmm. We hadn't perfected it all yet. And a lot of these, when you think about a circuit that was made in 1957, and now we're asking ourselves, like, what's it good for in 2019? Right. You know, it's good for whatever you want it to be good for. I mean, we're, none of these guitars were around then. Mm -hmm. This guitar didn't exist. This guitar got humbuckers the same year I think that one came out. Hmm. You know what? I might even give I don't even know if 57 is the first year of the Tweed Deluxe. Hmm. In fact, I don't believe it is. 57 might have been the year they went from the TV fronts to the, what we know, what we think of now as, as a deluxe. Right. But no, I, it predates that. Hmm. I, I misspoke. This guitar was getting humbuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this idea mm -hmm. of these type of amplifiers predate these guitars. Right, yeah, yeah. So what do they do? They don't, my point is they don't do everything mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. And not that they don't do the amp does a ton. Each channel is has a very different EQ. And so maybe the bright isn't great for everything. The normal's not great for everything. The jumper isn't great if you want clean headroom. It runs out. But it has a cool EQ of both of those things. Mm -hmm. No headroom, but you got this EQ. One's really bright, has less gain. You can look cleaner and brighter. You got all this low end and fullness in the normal channel, but you don't have a ton of high end. So what you then pair it with becomes super important. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, totally. It's just the whole thing is useful, right. but, but each setting may not be quite the most useful. You know what yeah, I mean? Uh -huh. It's matching it with your guitar, with your... If you're using pedals, how do they sound? Yeah, yeah. And getting what you want out of it. Yeah. Is, uh, is is trial and error. And the profiles are no different. Hmm. You know? Tone is an equation, like yeah, you said. Yeah, you capture it all. Sometimes people go, why is the normal channel so dark? And I go, well, because some guitars are so bright. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta balance it out <laughs> yeah, somehow. Yeah, just, and that's yeah. how the amp was. That's how they made it. Yeah. It I don't know sense. why they did it that way exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but there's those quirks just sort of make them magical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's totally. why these things are classic circuits. Yeah. I've been HW. Seuss. Play us out, Seuss. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> uh.